It is a very great privilege and honor to be able to welcome Dr. Mustafa Tseric to speak to us this morning. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise be to God who has made this morning the sun to rise on time and on right place. Praise be to God for giving us the faculty of love to respond to the call to come to the Yale University and to have the joy of reflecting on God and neighbor. I am really honored to be with you, especially because the heart of His Highness is so big that I always feel that I am in it more than I feel. But I felt this time very strongly when he promoted me into the Sharif. So thank you very much, Your Highness. I accept this promotion. <laughs> My co-patriot, Professor Wolf, had common had common state with me and we lost this commonality. Now we are rediscovering a new common world. So I didn't miss the common state, but I was enriched by the common world. So thank you for inviting us here. Your Royal Highness, Professor Wolf, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to be a part of the common action for the common world view of those who share the belief in one God, who created us all from a single soul, who share the same father and mother, Adam and Eve, who share the air they breathe and the rise of the sun they see every day who share Abraham's faith for the glory of God and Noah's ark for the salvation of mankind, who share the love for Virgin Maryam, Mary, and the respect for her son, Isa, Jesus, alayhi salam, who share the true stories about Musa, Moses, alayhi salam, and his divinely guided people around the Sinai Desert, who share the divine word of the Holy Quran, and the life experience of the Messenger Muhammad alayhi salam. And I am honored to be in the boat with those who have no choice but to accept the ethics of sharing as the right way for human progress. Indeed, I feel privileged to be one of those Muslim scholars who in Pope Benedict XVI's Regensburg University lecture on September 13, 2006, saw the opportunity for an open and constructive Muslim-Christian dialogue rather than Christian-Muslim blameful claims. It is God's grace that we have His Royal Highness, Prince Ghazi bin Mohammed bin Talal of Jordan, who took the lead in reminding the world of the fact of the common world between Muslims and Christians for the sake of the common good for the whole humanity. It is Prince Ghazi's stubbornness of love, his fearness of moral clarity, his quietness of courage, his indivisibility of integrity, and his ability to organize a joint dissenting voice that brought us here for love of God and love of neighbor. It should be no, it should be no surprise that there Yale was among the first to recognize the importance of the Muslim message because Professor Miroslav Wolf has just founded the Yale Center for Faith and Culture for such good news. 
it is obvious that two evils do not make up one good, but two goods do make up a double good of this conference under the two good leadership of Prince Ghazi and Professor Wolf. It is my sense that we have not even touched the face of Jewish, Christian, Muslim communities. Ours is not the problem of difference. Ours is the problem of similarity. Don't forget, those who are similar are often more severe toward each other than to the different. Thus, it is time that we, the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims, learn how to live with our similarities, especially in the Holy Land, which should be not the peace of the Holy War, but the house of the Holy Peace for all. Now, let me conduct a test with you about our common or similar world. I will read the following statements, and you will tell me, by raising your hand, from which of the three Holy Scriptures, the Old Testament, the New Testament, or the Quran, are the following statements. Are you ready? Okay. I read first. O children of Israel, remember my favor wherewith I favored you and how I preferred you to call to all creatures. Who is for Old Testament? Raise your hand. New Testament? The Quran? Okay. All right. Okay, the second. O Adam, dwell thy and thy wife in the garden, and eat ye freely of the fruits thereof where ye will, but come not near these three, lest ye become wrongdoers. Old Testament, all right, New Testament, Quran. Three, and remember when we did deliver you from Pharaoh's folk, who were afflicting you with dreadful torment, slaying your sons and sparing your women, that was a tremendous trial from your Lord. The Old Testament, New Testament, Quran. And remember when we did appoint for Moses forty nights of solitude, and we chose the calf when he had gone from you and were wrongdoers. No, Quran, all right. <laughs> and when the angel said, O Mary, lo, God has chosen thee and made thee pure and has preferred thee above all women of creation. Old Testament, New Testament, the Quran. Okay. Now, if I go further, I will, uh, you will not pass the exam, but I will stop here. <laughs> so let me, let me tell you, all these statements are from the Quran only, of course. But you are experts in religion, this is why you know it. When, when I go, when I go to other places, they fail. They say... But anyway, those of you who thought them to be from the Old or New Testament are just the proof for the common world between us that should lead us to our common love of God and our common love of neighbor. But let me put the Muslim-Christian-Jewish comparison in somewhat different perspective. In a general sense, if I am correct in my ignorance, hope is one of the main themes in Judaism and love is the one of the main themes in Christianity, whereas justice, adl, is one of the main themes in Islam. The Muslim scholars agree that the mission of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had two objectives. A, the revival of Abraham's monotheism, Tawheed, and B, the establishment of Moses' law, Sharia. In other words, the Meccan period of the Prophet Muhammad's mission was dedicated to the revival 
of the formula of the truth of monotheism.